Probably the easiest way to send a bunch of people into a frenzy is with these two little marks, and they wouldn't be complete without calling the version on the left a mistake. My bad, you say to yourself, I accidentally wasn't drawing eyes to tenfold the level of my skill. I think in general there's not anything inherently wrong with presenting something like this. I've used these marks before. It's an easy way to highlight contrast and maybe teach a new concept. Sometimes the setup is plain annoying though. I wouldn't call them completely harmless. But my biggest problem? It's the proliferation of that term, mistake. And straight up conspiracy time? Between you and me? Mistakes in art? don't exist. Now, don't get me wrong, mistakes do happen in art. Obviously, no one is perfect, and maybe you flip the canvas to find that you made an eye too big, or drew something on the wrong layer, or did know a good way to do something, but just forgot. Things that you recognize go, oops, and proceed to fix. But there's a key factor there. To be a mistake, you need to have both known what you did wrong and know how to fix it. It's not a mistake that you didn't make the Mona Lisa. Now, while I try to sneak mispronunciations into videos to farm engagement, let's go back to a concept that I've reviewed here before, that you can't be bad at something that you don't know. In fact, no one can truly be bad at something unless they are willingly ignorant or intentionally apathetic towards it. Inexperience in art does not inherently equate to a personal failing. We'll talk more about what that means for your art skills after a word from me before it starts storming again, who recently found through thousands of dollars of market research, um, more like running a 24-hour poll on Twitter, that a lot of you don't know about the new original trading card and hard enamel pin that I make every month that you can get in Biko's backpack, so I'm spreading a bit of awareness. Whenever I traveled for business as a child, um, whenever I traveled for business as a child, no, that's actually correct, I loved the Orlando airport, obviously. Uh, because it had a Disney World store, and I love Disney pins. It's such a great way to have a tangible version of a character in a nice collectible format, and that's one half of what I'm making every month over on patreon.com slash bageldenizen. Right now, Biko's backpack is focused on original characters from the world of Stormfellers, my animated series. This month's features an Aceus foil trading card that I'm really happy with, and an Ibo hard enamel pin. You're essentially getting these for free at the higher tiers, like the one that offers a personalized video critique or custom commission. It really sincerely is the most potent and fulfilling way to support an independent artist who likes making charming, weird little guys like this. Help lighten Biko's burden, aka his frighteningly escalating monthly financial obligations, and pick up Biko's backpack. Sincerely, and I mean this, thank you to everyone that supports there and literally makes what I make possible long term. So if mistakes don't exist, you might say, why haven't I made the Moon Elicer yet? In other words, how do we translate this into an actionable way to improve our work? Well, I gotta go back to this excellent live journal entry of all things from 2012 called Errors vs. Bugs and the End of Stupidity, where the author talks about making mistakes playing piano, performing telekinesis on their own hands with their mind, really a lot of parallels to drawing, that relationship between the brain and physical movement on the canvas, so to speak. I covered this in an earlier video, but it was very blurry, and I kind of wanted to revisit the subject. The key takeaway here is that if someone is playing the wrong note on the piano over and over each time, it's not an error. It's a gap in understanding or a piece missing. It's the result, in that author's case, of poor hand positioning on the keys. It's a bug. The result of a bug will almost always be the same unless, ironically, the person accidentally gets it right. The bug has a cascading effect over everything it's associated with. So pretend, for example, there's an artist who thinks you need to start drawing the head with a triangle like this. And I'm just trying to make an example here. I know it's possible to get results with this kind of triangle formula, but just indulge me. Every head this person draws will have the effects of this bug. A more experienced artist may come along and correct one of the drawings, saying, oops, in this case, you should have made the head a little rounder. But what will probably happen is that the artist pushes even harder to make a triangle-shaped head fit through a round hole. So what do you do? Well, there's actually a process that we can follow. Step one, if you haven't already done so, you'll want to make a lot of art, or at least a handful of similar things. Then you'll want to look for patterns across your work. Or to speedrun this process, have someone more experienced than you pick out the things that you need to work on. These patterns are bugs, not mistakes. Step two, since knowledge is power, now that you know that your arms or hands or foot positioning, for instance, is a bug that crops up across your work, does that mean that you start your next piece of art and just try to be more careful this time? Obviously not. You know what's going wrong, but you have yet to know how to do it right. 
In art, most bugs source back to a fundamental that you need to build your skill up in. Maybe it's construction, anatomy, or perspective, and that happens across all skill levels of artists. That means that you don't need to make a hundred more character drawings to fix your foot positioning. You need to do intentional focused studies of the specific thing that you want to improve. Study the 3D construction of the foot. Uh, do gesture drawings to get a sense of the weight and balance of the character. And study the ground plane or perspective of how your character's feet are standing on the ground. Now, step three, create new work or go back over old work to cement this new understanding that you have and repeat the process over with another concept, bug, or gap in understanding that you have. So that same post had a profoundly insightful thing to say, that once you see bugs for what they are and not as errors or mistakes, that you no longer see people as stupid. It changed the way that the author who's a math teacher viewed learning disabilities, or the kids that were just having a harder time grasping or mastering certain subjects. It might take them longer to learn, but simply adjusting the way that they were taught or focusing patiently on their weaknesses made all the difference. I feel like as someone with ADHD, I've beaten myself up constantly in my life for not learning things quicker, for making mistakes, or learning as fast as the next guy. But this is such a refreshing perspective. In this case, it's not a matter of just working harder to learn faster, it's deliberate and patient focus on the areas we need to improve. The ability to take some of the pressure off of yourself to deliberately practice will make the outcome better than being frustrated or looping a downward spiral of being harder and harder on yourself. If in this scenario the teacher is getting better results by being patient, curious, and adaptable, the same applies to teaching ourself as well. It's why Bob Ross's use of the phrase, happy little accidents, resonates so well, because it just means removing the judgment of objective correctness in the piece that you're working on or your skills and adapting the best that you can. Beating someone at a video game that they've never played isn't much of an achievement, especially when you've practiced at it really hard. They aren't bad, and you aren't even really better. There's just a disparity in the level of experience. That's why I'm always surprised when my students say things like, thanks for being so nice, or you showed me what to work on without tearing the work down. It makes me sad that people still do that at all. In a civilized society, especially artists with higher skill levels punching down or roasting beyond the odd playful teasing. Straight up, they should remember what it was like when they were at that level, because all of them were. Now, what that puts back on us, though, is that once we know about the bug, the more motivated that you are to working on it, the better you'll be. It's all just like what Jane Lynch said in the Donkey Kong Man movie, find the bugs, squash the bugs, repeat. Like I said about willing ignorance or apathy, knowing is really only half the battle, and the students that I see really attacking those bugs patiently are the ones I'm excited to see grow even quicker. So hold on, let me just put it into easily digestible content terms. Don't blindly expect to get better. Do what you can to patiently focus on your weaknesses. Oh, ain't that peachy. Hey, real quick, due to demand, I've recently raised the minimum time to get a personalized critique from me on Patreon, just from one month to two. It's still way too cheap for what it is, and I just had to adjust to everything costing me more and to people joining and immediately deleting. Uh, it may not even stay at this rate for too long either. The thing is, too, that it's intended to be a continuing mentorship, where if you send me additional images based on that initial feedback, I'll continue to help you out with additional thoughts or drawovers. It can be ongoing if you want it to, just like Biko's Backpack. And if you want a video faster or not through Patreon, I have one with a two week turnaround available through my website. My course Learn Character Design starts with drawing fundamentals because you need those and that's at learncharacterdesign.com. Have fun squashing those bugs, cadets. Thanks for watching and have fun creating.